Shannon. Yes, Kim. Did you know that there's a place that women like us, you know, the ones with a little more hips and curves, we can buy lingerie? Yes, I did. It's called Hips and Curves, and they carry a wide assortment of lingerie from sweet and demure to smoking hot styles for plus size women everywhere. Great! But did you also know that they have lingerie consultants to help you find the perfect wedding and honeymoon goodies? No, I didn't, but that's a good bonus. No more squeezing into lingerie made for a less hippie and curvy girl. All you have to do is go to fromringtoveil.com slash undies to start shopping. That's fromringtoveil.com slash U-N-D-I-E-S. Happy shopping! I'm Shannon. And I'm Kim. And you are listening to From Ring to Bell, a wedding planning podcast. Where we share tips and information to help you plan the wedding of your dreams. Without all the stress. Wedding Words Glossary Part 3. Menswear. Episode number 95. We are planning our big 100th show slash first year anniversary show. It's pretty exciting here, (laughs) I think. (laughs) It's a year, it's a hundred shows, it kind of worked out perfectly, but we're getting very excited for this. Right. We want to know who you want us to invite back. Right. So email us at info at fromringtoveil.com or hashtag fromringtoveil on Twitter or Instagram and let us know. Looking for your favorite shows, your favorite guests. So let us know. Hey, by the way, are you subscribed to the show? If not, what are you waiting for? Don't miss a show. Subscribe to From Ring to Veil anywhere you listen to podcasts and please leave us a review. If you don't know how, let us know and we can help you with that. It's usually very easy to subscribe to subscribe to podcasts. And if you're on the website every week and you wait for us to post on Facebook that, hey, we have a new uh, episode, there's an easier, better way to do it. And we can help you with that. So let's get back to the show. Menswear can be a bit of a mystery. Yeah. Especially especially to to unmarried women (sighs) or married women whose men only wear marvel comic t-shirts and jeans right (laughs) talking from experience in this episode we are going to go back to our glossary and we're sharing menswear right and can i tell you what there are so many terms and words (laughs) for for, and it's really mainly tuxedo words right Uh, so get ready this is this is uh this is a long one. Um, <laughs> you can find the post that we're using for this. We found a really good comprehensive post at The Knot. There will be a link in the show notes. First, we're going to start talking about jackets. Who knew there was more than one jacket? <laughs> oh, so number one, we all heard of the tuxedo, a.k.a. the tux. Mm. This is the most common I mean, I mean, like you think prom tux, you know, you think mm-hmm. wedding tux. So this is very, very common classic jacket. It's worn at formal, semi-formal events. Again, you know, if you could throw prom in there, that's a formal event. <laughs> um, there's, but there's a lot of choices when it comes to the jacket of the tux. You can go single-breasted, double-breasted. <laughs> there are three types of lapels. Yeah, so. <laughs> notched shawl or peaked it's crazy it's crazy but i i guess that just makes sense there's if you look at if you look at a t- guys wearing tuxedos they could be all different types too right. you know so hopefully this will help us understand a little bit and tell our guys and what they need also i mean if you're doing a you know a black tuxedo mm-hmm. let them pick one out that fits their personality and style the best too true i mean they may not all want the double-breasted May not look good on them. Yeah, exactly. Men have different body types like women do. And the different lapels and the different cuts of the tuxedo, you know, sometimes doesn't flatter certain body types. That's true. If you're doing black, let them pick out their tux. That's right. 
The next text is a full dress. This is what it sounds like. This is the tails, the waistcoat, the tailcoat, whatever you want. This is the formal one. Mm-hmm. It was really big in the 80s. Yes, it was. <laughs> in the early 90s. So it, it has two tails in the back. And usually they're, you know, a little bit longer. And they, ha- they can have two to six buttons in front. And it's usually worn at ultra formal weddings. Evening weddings, usually. Yes. The Mandarin. Or the Nehru jacket. Nehru, yeah. Or Mao. Yeah. I've never heard of that. See? <laughs> Learn something every day. This jacket features a stand-up collar with no lapel. And it is worn with a Mandarin collared shirt. So you're not looking at collars. You're not looking at pointed collars or anything mm-hmm. like that. It's just a round. Okay. Yeah, there's not those big flappy things right. there. <laughs> <laughs> That's a technical term. Technical term, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this this combo allows you not to wear a tie. If you're not a tie right. guy, you go for a Mandarin style tux. And I think those look very sharp too. Mm-hmm. You know, there, there's a reason that those are made. The next one is the cutaway or a morning coat. And that's M O R N, not not your morning dead. Um, it's a formal. It's for formal daytime weddings, and the groom wears the cutaway co- uh, coat, short in the front, long in the back, and tapered from the front waist button to a wide back tail. Cutaway jackets are either black or gray and are worn with matching striped trousers. So think about a British wedding. Yes, that's what I think too. Go back, watch. I think it's Brid- one of the Bridget Jones where they say that they're having a morning wedding and you need morning dress. Mm-hmm. This is what they're talking about. And if you can imagine them in the little short waistcoat with the long tails and the striped trousers, it's very formal, mm-hmm. but it's usually daytime formal. And their women are all wearing hats. Yes. <laughs> Big brimmed. Yeah. So <laughs> just giving you a visual. Yeah, that's exactly what I thought. It's this very British. Yes, it's here. very British. Mm-hmm. So the stroller coat is our next one. This is a semi-formal suit jacket. Cut like a tuxedo, usually charcoal gray or black, typically worn at weddings <laughs> that take place before 4 p.m. So I would think a regular tuxedo jacket. Right. So I do have to say that these are mornings and evenings and worn before this time and that. You can wear them anytime you want. Yeah. You know, if you want a morning jacket and we're in the evening wedding... <laughs> You can do that. It's just, it's up to you. I guess this is just all the traditional way to do it and what it was uh, originally intended for. So we talked a little bit about lapels at the first Uh topic, but this one is the notch lapel is the lapel that features the triangular indention where the lapel joins the collar. Mm -hmm. This is considered the least formal type of lapel. Really? Well, I would think that would be very formal. I don't know. I guess because it's common in suit jackets. Yeah, that's true. It's common in suit jackets, so it's not as formal. Yeah, that makes sense. The shawl collar is the smooth, rounded lapel with no notch. Think of it. You see the really formal tuxedos with the silk or the satin collars Mm -hmm. on them. That's a, you know, and that's all smooth one line. Mm -hmm. That's the shawl collar. Yeah, there's no notching and and seams or anything like that. And then there's the peaked lapel. This broad, V-shaped lapel points up and out just below the collar. Okay. I think I know what it's talking about. It comes to a really big point. Yeah. That sounds a little 80 ish. <laughs> <laughs> Next, we're talking trousers, pants. Pants. It's basically <laughs> the pants. If you choose a formal tuxedo, your trousers should match your jacket in style and color. If you would, if you'll be in a formal daytime wedding and will wear, wear a stroller coat or a cutaway coat, you're Wear gray or pinstripe trousers. Not necessarily. Yeah, I think trousers are just kind of a... a, a, I mean... It's got to be a personal choice what looks best. Yeah. You know, because you can wear... What was it? Okay, let me look here. You can wear a full dress or tailcoats, obviously, with some Wranglers and boots. (laughs) That happens. You know, we're talking about... Yes, that was the style when... That's still the style. That's probably still their style. <laughs> you know, it just depends. You know, you can wear whatever kind of trousers, trousers, pant you want. Pants. I believe. And you will not be taken away by the fashion Pantalones. Place. Yeah. No mas. Pantalones. Sorry. 
All right. Let's move on to shirt collars. This is interesting. Very interesting. <laughs> Wing collar. The most formal choice and the collar style most often worn with tuxedo jackets. It is a stand-up collar that has downward points. Right. Like if you think of a what you would wear with a bow tie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's not a big collar. It just has a little yeah. flappy things right there. <laughs> Another. The little collar points. Yeah. All right. The crosswick. This collar style crosses in front and is fastened with a shiny button. <laughs> yeah, that that's like a kind of like a high tight thing, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. The mandarin collar or the band collar, we've already kind of talked about it. Um, it's a stand-up collar around the neck. It's contemporary style. You can wear this op- option without a tie. Right. This is your best option for no tie. Yeah. Um, the spread collar. This resembles a standard button front shirt, but features a wide division between points in front. The wider collar looks great with a Euro tie or a standard necktie tied in a Windsor's knot. And, you know, I guess that's just your standard shirt collar, basically, yeah. is what it's saying. Cuffs. Yeah. Who knew there'd be a couple different kind of cuffs for the guys? <laughs> For sleeve cuffs, you have a few options. Standard dress shirt cuffs held together with cufflinks. Mm-hmm. French cuffs, which are folded over and closed with a cufflink. And cuffs that close with a button. The choice is yours, of yeah. course. I, you know, the French cuffs are really formal. I would mm-hmm. say that because they're mm-hmm. longer and they fold over and you have to, there's no buttons. So right. you really have to use a cufflink for mm-hmm. those. So if you're really going formal, yeah. Now, standard dress shirts you can get with no button. Yes. So that you can wear your cufflinks. Right. So. But they also have buttons. So you can use buttons. uh, Well, I mean, you could get them with buttons. Right. I see what you're saying. Yeah. Okay. I was like, it's either or, I think. Not usually both. But, you know, I was, when I was little, I I, I saw my dad had some cufflinks and I was looking at him like, how do they work? <laughs> How do you use this? Something, you know, you don't you button your shirt, you know, so I didn't understand, but now yeah. I do. It, they're just like little buttonholes that you have to slide that thing through. Mm-hmm. All right, moving on to neckwear. We'll start with the bow tie. I think that's the most... Bow ties are cool. Yeah, that's for right now, they're really in, Yes. right? Uh, the thing to wear with a classic tux, of course, your bow tie um, they come in, you know, so many colors and fabrics now. You can buy them on Etsy. I mean, like, they make special ones that that have matching pocket squares. And, I mean, the the possibilities are endless with bow ties right now. Right. But size and everything. <laughs> they even have the little spinny ones. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> Necktie. You can wear a classic tie with your tux mm-hmm. to create a more casual look. But it's still elegant, and it's still a wedding look. So mm-hmm. if you don't want a bow tie, if you're, you know, don't like to tie bow ties. Yeah. <laughs> don't like the constriction of bow ties. Yeah. You can do a, you can do a standard neck tie. Yeah. Or you could do the ascot tie. <laughs> <laughs> We're rolling our eyes here. <laughs> hey, I think that's, uh, well, you know, British. Mm. Um, the wide formal tie is usually patterned, folded over, and fastened with a stick pin or a tie tack. Usually reserved for ultra formal daytime weddings and worn with a cutaway coat and pinstriped uh, gray trousers. So the morning coat. Yeah. <laughs> Very British. And here's another one that we're going to roll our eyes at. <laughs> the bolo tie. You go, cowboy. <laughs> no. Um, if you're having a Western themed wedding, yes, the bolo oh, tie yeah. is appropriate. Absolutely. And again... A multitude of types of of, of bolos yes. that you can. Some have. of them not all obnoxious. Right, right. <laughs> there are some very subtle, sleek looking ones. <laughs> That's so funny, a bolo tie. Yeah. And then the Euro tie. This is a hybrid between an ascot and a regular. It's a long square bottom tie knotted at the neck and worn with a wing collar, like a regular shirt collar, right? Mm-hmm. Or spread collar shirt. The Euro offers a more formal look that is not as w- as all out as an ascot. So it's a cross between the two. <laughs> I would like to see some pictures of these. Maybe we can find some pictures of yeah. these. That'd be good. 
On to accessories. Vests. Vests. Which can be worn by themselves. Yes. We like vests. Yeah, I mean, those are nice. Mm -hmm. I mean, I like coats too, but if you're just looking for something different, you know, Mm. you can also wear these with Wranglers and boots. So, I mean, (laughs) and a bolo tie. So there you go. (laughs) You can tell what kind of weddings we've been to. Of course, you know, me growing up in Texas, that's all there was. Anyway, not all. Yeah. A lot. lot. Okay. The vest is an ultra formal for an ultra formal evening wedding. Mm -hmm. This is what it says. I'm sure that's what it was intended for. (laughs) You can use the waistcoat instead of a cummerbund. Right. Cummerbunds to me are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) And we'll get to cummerbunds in a minute. The vest let men... In the wedding party, lend a personal bit of personality to your touch. Yeah. So let them bring out their personality if you want vests or mm-hmm. waistcoats in there. Do their own style. Yeah, that would be absolutely acceptable for them to have <laughs> totally different vests. Right. And, the, you know, I think we've talked about this one in the superhero show or what, the, whatever. Mm-hmm. They all had different superhero vests on. And it looked really good. It was very classy looking. So there you go. Cumberbunds. <laughs> Shannon's favorite. These are pleated swatches of fabric worn around the waist when you're not wearing a vest. Usually black, but you can choose a colored cummerbund to match the bridesmaids' dresses or wedding colors. That's From catchers. Two, that's just two eighties. <laughs> you know what I mean? If you look back in our high school yearbooks, <laughs> yeah. I mean, most of the time they don't end up around your waist anymore. Yeah. They end up like here, or, you know, under <laughs> on their chest somewhere. Yeah. And so they were just ridiculous. I will. I just don't get that. I really. What is it even for? It was a crumb catcher. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense to me. It's like it's like a sash for a guy or something. You know, it's just just. I guess it was just there to bring more formal formality and color or something to their. You know, I think it has something to do with like if you look at royalty and all the stuff that they have to wear. Mm. It's you know something that correlates with it but it's not the same you know what i mean yeah. certain sashes and belts and such so yeah. i mean it just looks like a what a wrestling belt or something <laughs> big old chunky thing so yeah. and going back to the texas thing you know they didn't need cummerbunds they had big huge belt buckles so it really right, didn't. <laughs> right. they didn't really need them <laughs> oh, we're so old <sighs> anyway next one hmm. cufflinks we talked about them. They're a nice gift to give. Yeah. If you if your significant other wears cufflinks all the time, or else they're just going to be laying in their box somewhere True. and never been used again. So, But this is also a place you can bring out some, some personality yeah. if you want to do fun cufflinks. Um, again, like you said, they're probably not going to wear them again, <laughs> though, you know. It, I mean, unless... Like they dress the kind- in suits and yeah. very formal during the day. Yeah, unless they're the kind of businessman that likes to do that. Mm-hmm. You know, there are those out there that are that are that, that wear cufflinks yeah. a lot, but most, I would say, the majority of people don't. Yeah. Of course, we, our, where we where our husbands work, they're in <laughs> jeans and t-shirts. So I mean, it doesn't really matter. <laughs> yeah, it's a whole another mentality when you get into techie jobs. Cause yeah, the- and suspenders. Yeah. We love suspenders. They bring a quirky kind of fun mm-hmm. vibe to your wedding. They do. And if you're not wearing maybe suit jackets and you're just wearing like a tie with suspenders, then hey, make them fun. We like suspenders. So do you wear a belt and suspenders? Do you wear just suspenders? Hmm. Does it matter? It's a good question. Yeah, I have no idea. Do any of you know? Because <laughs> we would like to know. I mean, it kind of it kind of seems like overkill wearing a belt and suspenders. It kind of because they're both supposed to keep your pants up. Exactly. <laughs> but a sus- the, the, the suspenders don't tighten around. Yeah, your but belly. they hold them up. They do hold them up. So <laughs> I, I I don't know. And if you're wearing suspenders, do you wear a long tie or bow tie? I would say bow tie. Can you wear a long tie with suspenders? Uh, probably, but you know, if there was if there's a jacket over it, yeah, you can definitely. Wear it. I mean, but if you're just wearing suspenders and no jacket with a bow, you know, with a tie, I would say a bow tie because it take it distracts from your suspenders. Yeah. 
if you wear a long tie. Just don't wear a bolo tie. (laughs) You could go with an ascot. (laughs) (laughs) So that is all we have for you for tuxedo and menswear um, (laughs) terms for this word glossary that we are doing. Hopefully you've learned something new. We did. (laughs) A couple things. Yeah. Uh, and now you're a little more informed, and you can help inform your significant other, um, your fiance, on how to choose a tuxedo or formal wear. Formal wear, yeah, true. Remember, you can reach us at info at farmringtavel.com. And until next time, no stress, no worries. Keep calm and listen up. Thank you for listening to our podcast. You can find us on Facebook, From Ring to Veil, on Twitter, at From Ring to Veil, and on our website, fromringtovell.com. Music provided by bensound.com.